My name is Kwok Hong, and I am the Experiential Learning Director at the Culver House College of Business. Um, I advise a group called Management Consulting Academy, and that's actually where I know Jackson. Uh, in, in one of my most uh, earliest interactions with Jackson, I realized that he is among the most curious and mature students I've ever come across. Um, we learned right away that he was interested in the ideas of happiness and contentment. And true to Jackson, uh, he both studies it and practices it. Um, as you'll find out, he's doing a new college degree focusing on happiness in addition to his degrees in finance and economics. Um, and in addition, I hope he'll also talk about some of the practices that he uh, does in order to, to stay content and be happy. Uh, so without further ado, welcome Jackson Kirchis. Speaking of some of those practices you probably saw back there, that's a good one for uh, when you're nervous. <laughs> so first I want to thank you all for coming out. I also want to thank the Time Talk folks for making this all happen. Uh, the fact that a group of students can come together every semester, I think twice per semester, and do an event like this is really incredible. So thank you for coming out. My name is Jackson Kirchis and I am a happiness major. And so tonight I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about uh, what I'm doing and why. But I'm really gonna focus on why it's important to all of you and to all of us, and then we'll actually start to look more at, at happiness. It's a little bit about me. <laughs> That's that is me in my better days. I was born in San Jose, Costa Rica. I'm a proud dual citizen. Grew up in the best town in the best state in the Union, Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Woo! <laughs> Got one person over there in the house. <laughs> so, you know, I took this gap year to um, live abroad and learn languages, come back to UA, majoring in economics and finance. And uh, pro tip, uh, it, it makes the conversation with your parents a lot easier uh, when you tell them about majoring in happiness if you also major in e and finance. <laughs> and so, I'm a member of some great groups on campus as well, including but not limited to the Management Consulting Academy. And uh, you know, as I touched on, I may be the first person in history to graduate with a degree in happiness. So I'll tell you a little bit more about why I'm doing this. Who knows what's going on here? This is water, David Foster Wallace, a few people. Great, so you see, right, um, how's the water, what the heck is water? And the idea with this story is to say, hey, you know, so often the things that are right in front of us, the things that are the most important, are the things we overlook. And that was my experience as I obsessed over, you know, what do I, what do I want to study? And finally, I found the answer right in front of me, happiness. Now, to my knowledge, there's never been another happiness major here or at any other school. And I think that that speaks to the fact that, much like Wallace's is fish in their ignorance of water, our society has largely overlooked a subject matter, which is at the very heart of our experience. And so, it's not just about why I'm doing it, it's about why it matters to you. And so, what I want you to do is take out your phone, take out something you can write with, and just take a few seconds and write down what your happy life looks like. You know, maybe 10 seconds, nothing crazy. And if you're not sure, that's fine. That'll make me uh, look like I know what I'm talking about later. <clears throat> Great. So, who here was somewhat um, uncertain about what to put down for that? You? Great. Uh, let me ask another way. Who was so certain about their definite, clear picture of happiness that they'd be willing to bet their life that they're right? No one, okay. Well, this is important, right? Because if a happy life is what we're after, how you answer this question, that's the wager you're making, right? You're betting your life on knowing how to do this. And so it's problematic <coughs> that we really don't know how to do this. Um, but this is also about why it's important for all of us. Because 
society does give us sort of a model or a narrative for what a happy life looks like. And in my opinion, it looks something like this. You graduate high school, you leave the nest, make new friends, start on your life. Then you get a career, right, so you can make money. Then you settle down, soulmate, American dream, right? And then finally, I guess, you end up being successful and then you can be happy. But let's see what the science has to say about this model. So this first idea of fresh start, you know, make new friends, all that. Robert Waldinger and his colleagues at Harvard have been running the longest psychological study of its kind, basically tracking every factor you can think of to determine what leads to life satisfaction and longevity. What they found, far and away, the biggest predictor to be is quality of relationships. And so these aren't, you know, Facebook friends, right? These are really time-intensive, deep, meaningful connections that lead to health and happiness. Next, we have this idea of money, right? So what's going on here every year? GDP per capita, that's how much money we're all making. It's been increasing, but we see happiness has remained flat. And this is not just a problem here in China. We have huge increases in real income, but you see that dissatisfaction has risen and satisfaction has declined. So we're over two. Maybe we can turn around with uh, soulmate. And so what's going on in this graph here? Year zero, it's the year you get married. On the left, you have life satisfaction. And so you see two years out, <laughs> two years out, it's like, okay, yeah, that's pretty good. One year, things are really going well. You're getting married, it's the best year ever. And then you sort of come crashing back to reality. <laughs> um, and so you see it's not very sustainable. And so now this is for German women. And my hypothesis is that for you American girls, it might look something like this. You have to keep up with us guys. We're not always the best here. And although I haven't been married, we do have some actual data on how this looks. <laughs> so stay away. So now, getting back to this, right, we see this idea that you, you, you're successful, right, and then you're happy. Once again, people at Harvard, Sean Aker, they studied this and what they find is actually the reverse. It's not success than happiness. It's happiness than success. Happy people are more engaged, more effective, and more productive. And so how do we do, right? Well, it seems like we underestimate long-term relationships. We overestimate money. Soulmate is not the answer. And success, we have it backwards. So Houston, <laughs> we have a problem, right? Because we don't really know what makes us happy, and when we go looking for answers in society, we get into trouble. So where do we begin? What is happiness? How do we do it? And this is really the key thing that I want to focus on, is this idea of going from what it is to how it is. And that's because what implies something static, something fixed, a trait. Whereas how implies something dynamic, a skill or a practice. And if you survey you know, every discipline, philosophy, religion, science, all of them, this is the common theme. That happiness is a lifelong practice. It's about intentional cultivation. And so when we want to learn how to do something, what do we do? Two things, right? We study it and we practice it. It's a model for sports, for school, for music, whatever it is. And so think of happiness as our field of study. And this is just a quick overview of, of how I see it. So you start at the bottom, right? That's your foundation. Health, wealth, and time. These are your resources. If you don't have those, you're not going to do much else. Moving up, we have this idea of reflective and experienced happiness. And really this is saying, how happy am I in my life, or how happy am I with my life? So the research actually shows these are two very different things. For day-to-day -day happiness, it's training your mind to be more positive, more present, and you know, spending time with people you like. 
to reflect it, it has a lot more to do with your purpose, your goals, and your meaning. And so now hopefully you've learned a little something here. I want you to get your phones back out, and you can leave them out this time, so we're going to need them. And look back at you know, what you originally wrote for happiness, and I want you to just reevaluate. What would you add? What would you omit? What would you edit? And take a second to, I guess, let that sink in, and if you really feel like it, send it to me. Because I want to see, you know, where your thoughts are, how it worked, what your feedback is. And maybe you don't want to send it to me. Send it to yourself. Because I want you, next time you check your email, to get that reminder and be like, oh, jeez. That's what I need to start prioritizing. What I need to start focusing on. And so, what did we say, right? Keep your phones out. But when we want to learn how to do something, we said we study it. And we practice it. So now we're going to practice it. So I want you to get that phone and open up your camera roll. Camera roll. And just go back a few months, maybe a year, and try to find a picture that really makes you smile or you know, makes you laugh, just a good memory. And you know, you can show that to the people next to you, or maybe not. Um, for some of you, I'm, I'm looking in the back there. Great. Uh, so, now what I want you to do is just take a second to enjoy that, right? Because this is just sort of tapping into happiness. And you can hear it, right? I mean, this works. That's why I'm up here. They don't give these majors to anyone. Anyway. So, so, what I want you to do now, if you feel so inclined, that picture probably has someone else in it, or even if it doesn't, it probably relates to an experience that did have someone else in it. Send that picture to him and just say, hey, wasn't this a great memory? <laughs> See? Yeah. We know how it's gonna go. And if that's, if that's too awkward for you or too weird, just send a text and say, hey, I'm thinking of you, I'm doing this weird exercise, there's this happiness guy. And I promise you, this is gonna make you really happy and the other person really happy too. And so tonight we've talked about why this is important, right, for you and for all of us. And we started to look at with this exercise, and it sounds like it kind of worked, you know, how to study and how to practice to be happier. So this is what, if this was at all interesting to you, check out my website. It's a work in progress. Also, <laughs> disclaimer, I don't think it exists yet. Um, it's been a tough week with the web developer, but this will be the domain, so at least you can remember it, check it out soon. And to close, that's not mine, to close, I just want to say, look, this last exercise where we enjoyed this memory and shared it with you, to me, is the most important, and that's because happiness is meant to be shared. Unlike pure excitement or pleasure, happiness cannot exist in isolation. Building a happier life will inevitably lead to happier friends, a happier campus, a happier community, and a happier world. But that all begins with a happier you. Thanks. Woo!